Good afternoon and welcome. I invite you to stand as you're able. This is the Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him. And without Him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in Him was life. And the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through Him. He Himself was not the light, but He came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen His glory, the glory as of a Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. John testified to Him and cried out, This was He of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me because He was before me. From His fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made Him known. The Gospel of the Lord.
Blessed be the one, holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. be with you. And also with you Let us pray. O God, you make us glad by the yearly festival of the birth of your only Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that we who joyfully receive him as our Redeemer may with sure confidence behold him when he comes to be our Judge, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the broad of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thank you. Thanks be God. Let's read Psalm 96 together. 
Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all the whole earth. Sing to the Lord and bless His name. Proclaim the good news of His salvation from day to day. Declare His glory among the nations and His wonders among all peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is more to be feared than all the gods. As for all the gods of the nations, they are but idols. But it is the Lord who made the heavens. Oh, the majesty and magnificence of his presence. Oh, the power and the splendor of his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, you families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord, honor and power. Ascribe to the Lord the honor of his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Tell it out among the nations. The Lord is he. He has made the world so firm that it cannot be moved. He will judge the peoples in equity. Let the nations rejoice. And let the earth be glad. Let the sea thunder and all that is in it. Let the field be joyful and all that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the wood shout for joy before the Lord when he comes, when he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. A reading from Titus. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us that that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. The word of the Lord.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph, and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the one true and living God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. Over the last month or so, uh, like many of you, I'm sure, uh, Julia and I got pretty into the wildly popular Apple Plus TV series, The Morning Show. Have y'all seen it? Part of it? Um, so as to not spoil it without going into much plot detail, there's this great scene at the very beginning of the final episode of the first season where the television newsman Yanko, it's a great name, Yanko, He's sitting at a bar on Christmas in New York, and he's gotten pretty deep into his cups. Y'all wouldn't know anything about that, um, as his uh, scandals at his workplace and issues in his own personal life are just sort of actively spiraling out of control. So Yanko, very visibly tipsy, uh, looks up at the closed caption television, which happens to be showing the news. Uh, and he notices that they're talking about the equatorial wind and weather pattern called El Nino. Do you ever wonder why they call it El Nino, Yanko asks, as the bartender and several patrons look on with tacit interest. It starts with something so small, something so insignific insignificant, an anchovy, he says. You see, the anchovy, it prospers most in temperate waters. So when the equatorial trade winds, when they bring cold waters westward, it slowly broils the water under the heat of the sun. By the time the water reaches 
Chimbote, Peru, which is the anchovy capital of the world, Yanko says the warming waters are completely uninhabitable for the anchovy. That's so sad, a lady says. Oh, it gets worse, Yanko goes on. The economy suffers. I mean, everything suffers, not just the fish. And because this phenomenon coincides without fail with the celebration of the birth of Christ, they named it El Nino de Navidad, the Christmas boy. I mean, come on, Yanko laughed. you got to hand it to the Peruvians. Something so destructive and such harmless packaging, El Nino de Navidad, this thing that seems so insignificant, winds that make the water too hot for this tiny little fish to live, but no, it's a harbinger of something that throws everything out of whack. Droughts, floods, storms, huge global events. But the thing is, Janko says, there's nothing you can do to stop the wind from blowing. So what can you do when you see all these little anchovies belly up in the water, he asks. You just keep on moving and you brace yourself for the storm. Well, gosh, preacher, you might be thinking, it's Christmas Eve. I mean, come on, some happy news, but but bear with me. uh, Because Janko was absolutely right about one thing, uh, and he was positively wrong about another. First, yes, it is true that something so small can have such a tremendous impact. And this can go both ways. So let's focus first on the obvious good. Tonight, we gather together to celebrate God joining the ranks of humanity, coming to us as one of us, and in so doing, totally rearranging the order of the universe and the condition of our souls, but doing so in the most precious, gentle, modest, and humble way. This truth was perhaps most beautifully articulated in the 1926 classic one Solitary Life by James Allen Francis. Maybe some of you have heard it. He was born, he wrote, in an obscure village, the child of a peasant woman, and yet 19 centuries have come and gone. And today, Jesus is the central figure of the human race, the leader of humankind's progress. All the armies that have ever marched, all the navies that have ever sailed, all the parliaments that have ever ever sat, all the kings that have ever reigned put together, he wrote, all these have not affected the life of humankind on earth as powerfully as that one solitary life of Christ. Every year we gather in mass because of this miraculous, life-changing course of history altering event and yes we read there were cosmic signs at the time and yes there have been global implications ever since but this event can also have a very real and personal impact and it doesn't matter how long it's been since you last came to church we are here all of us because we know deep down that this birth has the power to change us to transform us slowly but surely again and again Christ can heal us he can save us he can make us ever new thanks be to God for this incredible gift Danko was also right unfortunately about the insidious and unstoppable forces of sin and of darkness and yes of natural disaster and we've seen this up close and personal have we not we've lived it firsthand uh, how something so seemingly small can set in motion what feels like a cataclysmic chain of events. And it doesn't matter how you feel about how we've responded to COVID as a nation, as a community, as a church. What we can all agree on is that the last two years have touched and in many cases changed virtually every aspect of our lives. With this, too, we've seen it. I know there's been a domino effect, fear to isolation, to anger, to disillusionment, to faithlessness. Feelings that can gnaw away at us in small and at times even unnoticeable ways, but the cumulative effect can be absolutely devastating. 
Just as Jesus' birth was welcomed with joy and wonder by his parents, by shepherds, by angels, by travelers from faraway lands, folks who simply couldn't resist the gravitational pull of the divine light, so too was it met with a sort of primal resistance and alarm. Folks couldn't help but be challenged by this God's miraculous action, and so they rebelled, they acted out, they strayed farther and farther away. But tonight, we must insist that it doesn't have to go down that way. We don't have to go down that path. Tonight, we can proclaim that the slow work of God's saving love is so much stronger and more lasting than the wily works of evil. Tonight, we can know that the light of Christ will always shine, piercing the shrouds of darkness, both in our lives and in this world. Which leads me to my next point. This is where Yanko was absolutely, positively 100% wrong when he said, there's nothing you can do. Nothing that is possible can save us, wrote American poet W.H. Auden. We who must die demand a miracle. Nothing that is possible can save us. We demand a miracle. What Auden meant, of course, was that the deepest problems of our lives, the greatest challenges and struggles, the things that keep us up at night, the things that fill our hearts with worry and anxiety during the day, our innermost brokenness, the brokenness of the world, it is all ultimately we must come to realize outside of our control beyond our ability to fix or correct on our own with our own limited resources and faculties. So we must then begin to look outside of ourselves to something much greater, to a mystery much deeper, to something that would likely at first glance seem so hard to believe and accept. It's no surprise then that the story of Emmanuel, the story of God with us in the flesh and the person Jesus is a story that is so full of things that don't seem possible, miracles and revelations that defy the very laws of nature and reason. Perhaps this is the point that needs to be made most clearly, and this is where I'll sort of bring it home. From the very beginning, this story, this miraculous act, this seemingly impossible breakthrough of divine and transformative grace and truth and love, it has always, has always unfolded against the backdrop of uncertainty and fear and disbelief and resistance. God has always been with us as one of us in time and space and embodied experience through all the joys and the terrors of life, through the faith and the hopelessness and everything in between. For 2,000 years, years now and for 2,000 more and 2,000 after that, his presence will be known and felt, but often in the most diminutive ways, ways that we might not even notice in the moment. Even when we encounter challenges that daunt and found us, even when our faith and our patience are pushed to their extreme limits, there is always something we can do, which is why we're here. We can pray worship, we can give thanks and sing songs just as we are doing today, we can hold on tightly and dearly to those we love, especially when the going gets tough, and we can trust in God's beautiful and timeless promise for us. A child has been born for us, a son is given, authority rests upon his shoulders, not ours. He is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Tonight, uh, Yanko was right. The love of God is made known to us by a quiet whisper through a gentle but profoundly impactful movement of mercy and grace with a star shining softly in the midnight sky. And this, this there is absolutely nothing we can do to stop. A very Merry Christmas to you all. Amen.
Standing now, <clears throat> now as you're able, let us affirm the faith of our church in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people can be found in your service bulletin. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we, we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. And that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world that there, there may be justice, justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will and all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they, they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. That the light and shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come and share your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. O God, who wonderfully created, and yet more wonderfully restored the dignity of human nature. Grant that we may share the divine life of him who humbled himself to share our humanity, your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be always with you. Merry Christmas. Stand right of that vent. It's cold.
Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome. In case you're wondering, we're trying to make it uh, a white Christmas in here by bumping the air all the way down. So if you're cold, just hang in there. Uh, welcome, one and all. Merry Christmas on behalf of the vestry and staff and clergy. We're delighted to, to have you here worshiping with us. I hope that you will have a wonderful, a safe, joyful celebration tomorrow and through the weekend. Uh, we will have a service tomorrow at 10 a.m. Uh, and then our normal Sunday schedule, which is sort of hard to believe, on Sunday, 7.30, and 11. Uh, so join us, uh, if you're still around, for the first Sunday after Christmas. I uh, want to give a special word of thank you to those who decorated the church. It is beautiful. You know who you are. Uh, about a half dozen people or so. Um, thank you. We, we are so, um, so lucky to have you all. Uh, and this is, of course, a, a beautiful space to, to spend Christmas in. I want to thank also our, our lay liturgical volunteers, the Altar Guild, our uh, lay Eucharistic ministers, uh, our youth musicians. Thank you all for offering your gifts this afternoon. Um, if you will, we're going to recycle these bulletins, so leave these. Uh, hand them back to the usher, or you can simply leave them in your pew. We'll pick them up. We're going to redistribute these at 530. Um, we, uh, as a reminder, we continue to offer communion in two kinds. We simply ask that when you come forward to receive uh, the bread, hold on to it until the chalice comes your way, and then you can gently dip or intinct it into the wine, and we can all uh, be full participants in communion that way. Um, I believe that's all uh, for now. We will um, live cast in the parish hall at 530, but I've been told that there's nobody down there right now, so we're all here. Thanks be to God. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, because you gave Jesus Christ, your only Son, to be born for us, who by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit was made perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become your children. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven to forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give you thanks to you, O oh God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, and the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In Him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In Him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. And the night before He died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection unto your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with blessed Mary, blessed Joseph, blessed Peter, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Body of Christ.
In thanksgiving, let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal being. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. May Almighty God, who sent his Son to take our nature upon him, bless you in this holy season, scatter the darkness of sin, and brighten your heart with the light of his holiness. Amen. May God, who sent his angels to proclaim the glad news of the Savior's birth, fill you with joy and make you heralds of the gospel. Amen. May God, who in the Word made flesh, joined heaven to earth and earth to heaven, give you his peace and favor. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen.